Hello, Mission Pro family. Welcome to On a Mission. I'm Emily. I'm here with Melanie. And we are on the road to Don't Stop Me Now. We are getting ready for our big show on Saturday, heading down to Conroe, Texas, Southern Star Brewery for one of our biggest shows of the year. And we are so excited. And we also have a very special guest tonight. We have Edith Surreal who will be here today. Uh, but I want to make sure that you all got your tickets for Don't Stop Me Now. You got to run over there, go to missionprowrestling.net, and that is where you get your tickets. And if you can't join us in Conroe, you can stream it on Title Match Network. And this is a show you don't want to miss. It's going to be incredible. Melanie right now is doing also Instagram Live right now. We're we're doing both right now. <laughs> so that's why she's uh, that's why she's muted. But I am so excited. Um, we also have some incredible, incredible shows coming up the rest of 2022. So that's all on missionprowrestling.net. And if you have not seen, we also announced our Oklahoma Pop Culture Con. We will Mission Pro will be there for some special. Uh, special Mission Pro Wrestling, and we'll have some signings and special panels on June 25th in Oklahoma City, and we can't wait for that. We're going to have a whole Mission Pro crew there, so remember, subscribe, like, follow all of Mission Pro channels, because that is where you're going to hear all about the upcoming talent and matches that will be there, and I'm so excited. Melanie's still chatting on Instagram Live here. <laughs> um, Melanie, how's, how's all our Instagram? Uh... <laughs> hey, Emily, I'm talking hey. now to you and the people right now on, I love uh, it. <laughs> on Instagram live. I'm just what, I was going to ask you, how's our Instagram uh, fans over there? Uh, wanted to say hi. I was just telling everyone to like, follow, subscribe to our YouTube, follow us Mission Pro on all of the social media channels, because that's where talent match graphics for the Oklahoma show for future shows. That's where that's all right. the fun content is going to be. And that's where Absolutely. we need to be for all that fun info. <laughs> that's right. Guys, if you guys want to know what we're talking about, jump on over to Mission Pro Wrestling YouTube channel because we're talking about Oklahoma. We're talking about Conroe. We're talking about that all the tickets have dropped for the rest of the year. Wherever Mission Pro is going to be, tickets are available. Emily, I'm so excited for the rest of the year because, you know, we started this year crazy train and it just keeps getting better and better and better. And I am so excited for our guest tonight because she has been my email uh, pen pal for the past year and a half. Uh, we finally got to meet uh, at Bangers Only in Dallas, Texas. So I am just so excited to to finally have a discussion with Edith Surreal. Finally. I mean, I, I'm so excited. I know we want to bring this guest on. Edith Surreal has been like on the tip of our tongue. We keep, we've been talking about her and it's, I'm so, so excited to have her on. We're going to wave to all of Instagram. So let's welcome Edith Surreal onto On a Mission so we can chat about this upcoming debut happening this weekend. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Yes, we have been uh, pen pals for quite a while trying to make this happen and it's finally here. I'm so excited. It is finally here. So Melanie is, you know, the, the person behind a lot of those emails that, uh, <laughs> that you see, that sponsors see and a lot of the talent reaching out. And so Melanie, how did this whole year and a half correspondence, I feel like this is a movie we need to make. I know. I feel it's been like, I don't know, like two strangers, <laughs> two trains in the middle two of the night passing by. Night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> passing by each other. Um, it was it was funny. I, I honestly I can't remember if I I think I reached out to you. Yeah, I mm -hmm. I tell you, I'm always the one in sneaking into people's DMs. I'm that person. <laughs> Well, it's you or Holodad. I feel like either one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm probably the better one to get in in the DMs, though. I feel like if it's Holodad speaking into your DMs, and you might think like, oh crap, I've done something wrong. <laughs> right? I mean, um, she is she is the darkness. <laughs> um, so I emailed Edith and I was like, hey, do you want to come to Mission Pro? And she was like, absolutely, but just we never like could get our dates together it was something right you know something always happened mm -hmm. well when we first started talking um it was about a year ago and i had unfortunately been injured so yes. 
exactly a year ago, I was dealing with, uh, I had just gotten my concussion. So that put me on the, on the shelf for all of last summer. So, um, you know, once I got healthy and we started trying to get dates to align, it just didn't happen until, till right now. So. Which is crazy the way things work out though. I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes that's just how long it takes because things are happening and wrestling so fast and dates just start getting booked up. But I'm so glad that we finally got you on the show. And I'm glad I finally got to meet you in Dallas for bangers only. I was just like, I have to say hello to my <laughs> pen pal. <laughs> I was so glad you did. <laughs> so I was just like running in because I was on the show before that just to like yeah. grab my bag and like, oh, this isn't my locker room. I'm just sneaking in by. And then <laughs> we got to say hi. I know, it was amazing. I loved it so much. Uh, uh, how, is, how was your experience for Mania Weekend for the collective weekend? Oh, it was a blast. Um, you know, it's always a huge honor to be able to be invited down to WrestleMania weekend and work the collective shows and work any of the shows down there. So anytime I have like multiple bookings, like I've been fortunate enough the last couple of years to, to have at least four matches. Um, this year I had three. Um, so just to be able to be down there with the who's who of independent mm -hmm. wrestling is is really cool and, and super fun to see all my friends from all over the country that I don't always get to see, you know, um, see all my friends from the West Coast and the Midwest and overseas, you know, to hang out with like Shaza McKenzie, who yeah. I haven't seen in years. So um, it was super, super fun. Yeah. I love it. John I mean, in Jersey actually has a question. Besides Melanie invading yeah. your DMs, what made you want to come to Mission Pro? He says, thank you for coming and welcome. Oh, yeah. It's an honor. I mean, it's already, in the short time Mission's been around, it's already become very prestigious in women's wrestling. So it feels like, you know, one of those steps you have to take, one of the stepping stones um, to be a wrestler um, is to come through Mission. So it already has that prestige um, with fans and, and with performers alike that it is something important and something special. What do you think makes like a promotion something special? And like you said, it has this prestige already. What 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 do you think gives it that? I don't know. I mean, I think maybe the names that come through there, but I think it's just a lot of times it's something you can't really put your finger on. It's just mm -hmm. it's kind of the magic that happens. Like there's right. a lot of magic within professional wrestling that when certain personalities and certain people are in the same room, something really special happens and. And I have that feeling that that's what is going on down in Mission. And that's why I wanted to be a part of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm so absolutely. excited for you to experience it this weekend. Um, I mean, this past year has been a transformation for a lot of the women involved at Mission Pro. Mm -hmm. And there's been so many incredible matches and shows. And has there been anyone that you've been watching um, and kind of keeping an eye on? I know you have your really big match this weekend, which we'll talk about, but... How, is the, how has it been watching Mission Pro evolve from kind of your perspective? Uh, it's super fun and super fun to see like my friends come down there and, and rave about how much fun they had. Like Willow and um, Masha Slamovich always talks about how cool it is. Um, you know, I've definitely had my eye on Kylan King. I'd love to wrestle her. So um, that's been like floating around in different places. So, you know, mm -hmm. she's someone I have my eye on and obviously Rosa Negra. Uh, who I have the you know honor to wrestle this weekend. So yeah. Now, how, how do you? I, I'm always I'm curious. How do people prepare for La Rosa Negra? Because you know she is just she is this fireball of energy coming at you. And do you do you watch tapes? Do you just kind of you know watch her or go back and watch past matches? Like how do you prepare? Um, yeah, definitely watching tapes, watch whatever I can find because uh, we've never been on the same show together. We've never met. So, you know, I've never got to experience what she's like in a room, which is definitely makes things different. Like when you can see some, when you're in the room while someone's wrestling, you definitely get an idea of who they are. You know, I was just watching... Um, like Masha, and I've wrestled her before, but there's just such a presence about her um, that you can only really, really appreciate once you're in the room with her. And, um, you know, unfortunately, I've never been, like I said, on a show with, with Rosa. So I'm a little nervous about that because it's, I only have tape to really rely on. Yeah. But, um, 
yeah, I mean, maybe that could be an advantage too, because maybe we can make something really, really cool when we're, you know, we have very little expectations, not little expectations, but um, there's so much unknown that right. uh, something special could, could really happen now. The only thing I can say is uh, watch out for the twerking. She is the queen of the twerk. She's <laughs> in the ring. Love that. <laughs> and the next thing you know, you're going to find yourself twerking. Like, wait, I didn't come here for this. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's not my bag, but you know, I'll that's, give yeah. it a if the moment presents itself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, so this, this, the past like year or two years has, has been really a, a journey for a lot of people in the industry that, you know, the, the pandemic and kind of everything shifted, right? And and how we how we do shows, how we do matches, having fans, no fans. Um, what has been your experience this past year, year and a half in like shifting your focus and focusing on other things or, or did you shift kind of how you, um, how, what you focused on in order to make sure that you were honing your craft to, throughout this, this kind of tumultuous time. Yeah, it was really tough. Um, you know, especially when the world just shut down for, you know, that period of time where I couldn't train, I couldn't go to the gym, I couldn't wrestle. Um, and then once wrestling started coming back, it was in such a limited capacity. You know, I did a handful of shows for maybe six months with no fans. And that's wild because I think we all really took for granted how much energy the fans give you and mm -hmm. how much they're necessary to put on, at least at that point, to put on a, a good match. So we had to really relearn things and relearn how to do, how to present ourselves and relearn how to create a captivating performance to, you know, people at home or to just our friends and the other wrestlers in the audience. So you really had to rethink what you do. And, uh, you know, once fans started coming back, I think we all became a little bit more well-rounded um, as performers to get used to just such a different thing and having to rely on telling stories, you know, through talking and, and through, through your vocals and stuff like that, which was not as present before. Right. Um, so it was a huge learning experience for all of us. And I, hopefully, you know, a lot of us became better for it. Yeah, absolutely. Did you find like, you know, because we, we were down for so long, no matches and training and stuff like that. Like, did you find to have go into, into social media? Cause I know like more people started doing more TikTok who weren't doing TikTok before, so they could get content for their social media. Did you find yourself having to do something else to get more content? Um, yeah, I think I didn't really do it um, personally as much, but yeah. like working with different promotions, like mm -hmm. um, when I was working with Camp Leapfrog, we did a lot of that kind of thing um, just to have something um, right. as a way to connect to the fans at home who are in the same place that we are. So um, yeah, a lot of the places I was working with were definitely trying to do that. And, you know, even like beyond wrestling, we did, you know, shows in backyards again and stuff like that. So it was just you know, the collective group of us trying to figure out yeah. how to do this. <laughs> how was it going back and working in like, in like the backyards and the rings and stuff like that in the, in, in the open? Is it was like, okay, back to basics kind of, or it was like, oh, this is fun. It's like the best. <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, it was fun. It was, you know, it was definitely like humbling because we're the ones, you know, putting together the ring and, and cheering for each other and all that stuff. So it, you know, it helped, you know, remind us at least reminding me what makes it special and you know being able to perform in front of my friends and you know to have that really like diy spirit and mm -hmm. to kind of appreciate all the work that goes into making these shows because you know again we're we're the ones setting up the ring and you know doing doing all the stuff that you know we had started relying on other people for and a ring crew and stuff yeah. like that so we definitely appreciated everything that we have and now that wrestling's you know almost fully back or I guess it's totally falling back. It's um yeah, you just appreciate it more. Yeah, true. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh you know, speaking about, you know, we, we during this pandemic, you know, we we were kind of like in a little bubble and now everybody's traveling more and stuff like that. You know, the, one of the things we love to talk about is traveling stories. I feel like everybody has a really <laughs> bad traveling story. Um we've had, you know, uh luggage was accidentally taken and then brought back to the airport I, that had their gear in it and everything oh, no. I felt really bad for them and you know just like really bad like you know 
barely making it to the airport to make connection flights and stuff and having to run from gate one to gate 55. <laughs> <laughs> What what is what are your travel? What, I want to hear one of your travel stories. That just like oh my god, never again. Oh, I don't know if I have a good one because I'm always very prepared and I'm very organized and I like <laughs> to get. Are. I'm always at the airport early. I'm always like um, just well planned. Like I know you know my trip to Mission this weekend. I have a connection, so I know okay. I'm not gonna. I'm only gonna do a carry on, so I gotta limit things down. Um, I'm I. I like to pride myself that I have the most organized gear bag in all of professional wrestling. <laughs> you know, I have little packing cubes with every outfit neatly folded nice. and all fits perfectly in my suitcase. Everything's like super organized. We need so. a seminar in that. We need yes. a seminar. Cause yes. I feel like not, I mean, I love the women in the locker room. I love all of them, but some of these gear bags. <laughs> Yeah, it opens and it's like a like what's the the, the little clown that pops out? Of the yeah, like a jack in the box. Yeah, the box like, Woo! <laughs> oh, I can't live like that. And if I travel with someone and they're like that, I'm I go I go online and I order them some packing cubes and I tell them how to organize. Like if you look at Willow's bag, it's all packing cubes because I gave them to her. I love, I love it. it. Okay, so, so a little seminar on on packing. Man. Yeah, Willow doesn't have those packing cubes this weekend. She's about to get a lecture. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm all, every time I see her, I was like, see, see, it's so much better this way, right? We're going to inspect your bag. We're going to like, let's see your bag. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I actually used you as a um, an example to some wrestling students. I was like, guys, let me tell you who you want to be like. <laughs> And there, and I was like, all I asked for was this, and I got a Dropbox, and I don't have to ask for nothing else. It was all in there, organized. And I was like, I was like, please, please take this as a lesson. And they were like, oh, okay. And I was like, yeah. Then I was like, the next time I ask you for something, you better be like, here's my Dropbox. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I got it. Super organized Dropbox. We have all of my promo pictures. They're labeled with the photographer's credit. If you need that, I have announcing notes. I have my wrestling resume. I have um, my theme music all, yeah. and I have when I had a censored version, I have a censored version and the explicit version. Mm, love organizing. I love it. it so was, like, yeah, it was a thing of beauty. I was like, what? I, mean, I, I love that too. Melanie and I are both like fangirling over that because that's so important for us. <laughs> we love that. So have you always been that organized or did like your coaches, like when you were getting into the business said, Hey, you need to have this. And like, you're like, okay, I'll be ready for it. I mean, I think that comes from, you know, my coaches were like that, um, you know, specifically like Drew Gulak and, and um, Orange Cassidy were very big on like um, specifically Drew was just like, you know, be professional, like yeah. have everything organized. And uh, when I came through Chikara, I'd have to do a lot of that stuff and have to work with other wrestlers like promo pictures and it was low res or they didn't have one or something like that. Um, and I'm also a professional graphic designer. So, you know, I've worked in corporate settings and startups and stuff like that, where I'm, you know, have to deal with these types of files. So it's just a part of my training. And also, um, I think my head is very scattered. You know, I have like learning disabilities and stuff like that. So I need to make sure my world is very organized because mm -hmm. I can only really focus on one thing at a time. So, um, yeah, I just do my best to make it easy as possible for myself. That's amazing. Absolutely. I mean, it makes your, your life easier. Uh, John says packing cubes are the bomb. Mm -hmm. My work clothes for travel. There you yeah. go. We should, we should look into those for uh, mission pro mission, mission pro packing cubes packing there you go. oh it would be a great merch item i can help design it <laughs> i love it we should definitely do it we can give out as gifts for all the girls at christmas yeah oh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No you no made problem. it you made it through your match here you go here's your yeah. Yeah. <laughs> organize your gear yeah. <laughs> so okay so i feel like wait 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 so okay. no horror stories in travel none like no road trips, no wild road trips. Yeah. Where the car flies off the cliff. Like, okay, no. I got a good one. I got a good one. Okay, okay. okay, so I was on the road to. It was a couple of years ago. I was on a Takara road trip, and we were on the road to Chicago. Um, so it was, you know, we did one whole day of driving because it, you know, it was a couple of days out there. So we did one whole day of driving, and everyone else in my car had taken their shifts. So 
um, you know, it was the next day. It's like, okay, I'll do the bulk of the driving today. Like, this is my turn. You know, I'm fair. So I get in the car and 15 minutes down the road, I get pulled over. And I'm really upset because I always set my spit on my, um, the speed, what's the, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, 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 the cruise, cruise control. control. Cruise control to nine miles an hour over because in my head, like, they're not going to pull me over for only nine miles an hour over. It, you got to be at least 10 before they pull you over. <laughs> this is flawed logic because I got pulled over for, yeah. yeah, I got pulled over for doing nine miles over the speed limit. So she takes my license and then she comes back and turns to the passengers, be like, I hope one of you has a license because uh, you're not driving anymore. It's like, what do you mean? And this was like right after my birthday. And my license was expired. No. So the no. Author, you know, the cop was super nice about it and just like, you know, like it it was clearly like two days expired. So I just couldn't drive the rest of the trip. <laughs> and, and you know, my travel mates had to do everything on their own. And you know, I was nice and I tried to stay awake in the passenger seat and to be the good navigator <laughs> and stuff like that. So yeah, that was my lesson learned of <laughs> make sure all your stuff up to date before you get in the car. Wow. Uh, I've had I've had people do that when they have their passport and they go and it's you can't travel without with an expired passport. Oh. Yes. Well, I was thinking my passport expired around the same time. So I was doing all this work to renew my passport, put the new pictures, send everything in. Mm -hmm. I just didn't even think it was um my license was expired at the same time. Wow. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you made it through. Yeah, I'm sure not happy with me. I do like your logic. Minus five miles over. Okay, that's safe. I like to drive fast. I like to drive really fast. I'm like, they won't stop five. you for five miles. But yes, uh, similar logic. They won't five stop is, you for five Five is kind of like the, the variables, like the percentage yeah. where you're like, oh, it's just a little heavier on the pedals. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, <laughs> It's Texas. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Texas is like 20. If you're not going 20 over, they're going to run you over. Yeah, exactly. I, got, I did a, a road trip across the country when I was, uh, you know, out of college and I got pulled over in Amarillo, Texas. And it was like, mm -hmm. I was very scared because like, you know, the, the cop came over with like, you know, the hat, which I was just not used to. I'm from yeah. Philadelphia. <laughs> I don't know much about Texas. Uh, you know, pulled me over and was just like, you're a long way from home. And I'm like, that is such a scary thing to say. <laughs> oh, that's like the start of a, of a movie. That's yes. like, yeah. <laughs> You're like, sir, may I record this encounter? Yeah, no, it was before, yes, this, we didn't have those then. <laughs> I know, oh my gosh. Oh my I, I had that too. I always get nervous around El Paso because I've been stopped uh, three times there. One for a, I got a ticket and it was a fix it ticket. Because uh -huh. the light on my back license plate was out. Oh, your license plate. <laughs> yeah. I was like, um, really, sir? And they're like, and where are you going? And where are you coming from? And what is the purpose of your trip? And I'm like, um, I'm moving. That is why my car is full of crap. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. I was like, this is awkward. Because I was like in slippers and pajamas. It was the night. I was just driving. I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, you do not want to get stopped in like flannel pants and like fuzzy slippers. Oh, I was trying to be yeah. comfortable while driving. Were they fuzzy bunny slippers? They weren't. I wish they were. They weren't even cute. They were just like oh, ratty man. house slippers. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be comfortable while driving. I hear that. I mean, I hear you. I drove 20, almost 24 hours. Like we were like, all right, comfy clothes. That's it. Yeah. You just have to like. Put your mind, focus, and be comfy. Yeah, exactly. It's a funny thing about wrestling is some places you want to, like, dress up when you come in. Um, so, you know, so you want to make, like, a nice impression when you first walk in the door. So there's been times where, like, you know, we're driving eight hours to a venue. So, of course, we're in our comfy clothes. You know, we get close. We pull over. We get changed to have that nice, you know, walk in and then yeah. shake hands, say hi to everyone, and then go to the back and put on our gear. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> For like two seconds wearing our nice clothes. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing all these things you have to think through. Like, you know, like finding that stop that's 20 minutes away from the venue that you can like mm -hmm. quickly change and mm -hmm. get ready. 
Um, there's so many things that I feel like there's a lot of wrestlers that have to learn, you know, in, in the business. And it seems like you've learned so much um, in the few years you've been wrestling so much already um, and are, are, and are such a, an inspiration and such a, a role model for so many. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so we were talking about it, you know, the road trips and then we were talking, you know, the other thing we like to talk about is road trip snacks. Yes. What is your go-to, salty or sweet? Oh, sweet. Both. Okay. But, like, I love candy. That's my oh. big. <laughs> candy was a very popular choice for, for a lot of people. I mean, wh is it? we had Twizzlers. We had Sour Patch Kids. We had what other? Well, a lot of gummies. Like, a lot yeah. of people like gummy bears, gummy worms. Mm -hmm. So is that what, is that, like... You have your, your bucket full. Right, right now, my personal favorite is there are these new, like, Airheads bites. They're, like, little, yes. like, oh. just, like, crunchy. They're, like, Airheads with, like, a crunchy shell and, like, the gooey Airhead inside. That's, like, my new favorite. That's that's the current hit. <laughs> it's funny. Josh says chocolate, but you know what? Not a lot of people like chocolate. Not a lot of people I, have been Not on the chocolate. road trips. It's messy because it melts mm -hmm. you on your car seat. Yeah. It's just not uh, not conducive all the time for the only thing that I would do for chocolates would be chocolate covered raisins from okay. Buckeyes. Those are good because then those you could just like throw in your mouth and yeah, I'll do that with like M and M's. Like I love those like yeah. a fudge M and M that's really really good. Um, I'll do that or like uh, like Reese's. I love Reese's. Yeah, see, I'm the oh, weirdo who like brings the chocolate covered espresso beans oh, from so Trader good. Joe's. Those are like oh. addictive, and I'm like wired. But I'm if I'm driving, I'm like, yes, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> right, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. My other go-to, I have this before every match, is we have like our convenience stores Wawa around here. Okay. Um, for anyone from like the Philadelphia area or Florida, we'll talk about Wawa. Um, that's our thing, and I always before a show. I stop there and get the little Sabra like hummus and like little pe oh. little like pretzel cracker things. Yep. That's like my go-to before a match or apples and peanut butter I can get from there too. So I'm really like I've I've been such the habit lately that I I feel a miss when I don't have that. Like it definitely affects my match quality and my mood for the day if I don't have that before wow. you're ready. I mean, wow. do you, that I mean, do you have like your go-to uh, like post match meal that like your like celebratory meal. Um, I love having a little pack of fruit snacks in my gear bag for after a match. And um, when I come home, this is usually what I do when I come home from training. But there's Morning Star Farm Buffalo Wings, mm -hmm. like the like microwavable like vegetarian. I'm not even vegetarian. I just like them. <laughs> um, so I'll like have the soy soy meat. Or who knows? Cardboard, <laughs> probably. I don't know. <laughs> but like, <laughs> I'll have that just like covered in honey mustard. Like that's my oh. that's my favorite like post training uh treat. That sounds delicious. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I mean, what I love it about? though. I'm not. You're not vegan. You just you just like it though. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I was a vegetarian in high school, so I like you know picked up a couple habits, and yeah. I was one of them. It's easy. It's like two minutes in the microwave, yeah. like. I'm tired. I just, I just want it. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you just need that, like that sugar and those, those carbs. And mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. so I like, I mean, we all eat snacks all the time. Uh, you'll see, we'll have tons of food this weekend. <laughs> yeah. um, but I wanted to like talk to you a little bit about, I know you, you said you're a graphic designer and you have, you have an art artistic background. Mm -hmm. um, you are an artist. And so I would love to know how you like created uh, kind of created this this Edith surreal and and um, you know how that art kind of inspired uh, wrestling for you. Oh yes, this is a, we can talk all night about this because <laughs> um, it's so so, it's so a part of who you are and and I, yeah. I want the fans to know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the character started. You know, I come from a company called Shakara, and the character that I was given was called Still Life with Apricots and Pears. That was my first character, and I. I'm still the same character. I just changed the name and evolved it along the way. But that's that's where I started. And I was paired up with this wrestler named Blank, who was the tortured artist. And, you know, I was his creation. I was his masterpiece. Um, and I was just kind of like an aimless wrestling student then. And, you know, he had this idea and was able to, like, you know, all right, we'll use, we'll use them over there. And that will be my, like, first, that will be my creation. So that's, that's where we started. And, um... It just kind of like it was just a blank canvas and we just kind of made it whatever we wanted and i just kept 
running with it and trying different things and um, just having fun. And yeah, and like you said, like I do have an art background, you know, I was, I'm a graphic designer and I was doing, um, you know, illustrations and silkscreen posters. And, um, you know, I had a couple solo art shows and stuff like that. So uh, I just wanted something different and professional wrestling kind of just showed up in my life and took over and uh, it just became my main artistic outlet. You know, I look at wrestling a lot of the same ways that I do with visual art. And, you know, I follow the same kind of process when I'm thinking about my matches or thinking about my characters or thinking about moves or anything like that. Like, I think very visually. So, mm -hmm. you know, my offense and my, my move set is very visual. You know, I like to try it out in training and then record it and take pictures of it to see how it looks from different angles and to make sure that you know, there's a good expression there. You know, I think of them as like sculptures. Yeah. Um, so that's like the most important thing when I'm thinking of my moves and when I'm helping other people think of their moves, you know, I want it to look very visual. That's that's the most important thing. And that's why we're professional wrestlers. And yeah. um, I like to think of professional wrestling as a performance art. You know, it's mm -hmm. less of a sport. It's less sports entertainment. Like we are performing artists, no different than dancers or actors or anything like that yeah. um you know we're a combination of all of these things um so that's that's really how i think of professional wrestling i look at movies a lot when i want to think about mm -hmm. my match structure and the feeling i want and how these gears can change and how to catch someone off guard with something so i've been watching a lot of um this director, Nicholas Winding Refren, he directed uh, this movie called Drive and Neon Demon. Yeah. And he's very weird and very esoteric and stuff like that. But he has this show on Netflix or um, on Amazon yeah. called Too Old to Die Young. So I'm watching that right now. And I just love, I really love the pacing of it. And he's, there's a lot of violence in it, but it always catches you by surprise. And it's always very, very raw and it's very shocking. And there's a lot of contrast there from mm -hmm. these very slow scenes. It's very, very slow, but the violence is as gritty as you can possibly make it. So yeah, I look at a lot of that kind of stuff when I'm thinking about my performance and what I want to bring to the ring. I love that because I come from a television and film background. That's, that's where I come from. And uh, that's, that's how I always tell people when I'm explaining to them, it's like, um, I don't, critique your wrestling because I'm not a wrestler. I've never trained as a wrestler. I, that's not my background. It's like, but when it comes to like working for the camera and working for the crowd, that's my like forte. And I always tell people, it's like, man, you got to look back at like silent movie sometimes and just like the expressions on their face. It's okay to sometimes be over the top with wrestling because that's what you want to do. You want to make sure everybody hears you, sees you, feels you. Mm -hmm. And, um, I just, I, that's where I, I, I always tell, that's what I always tell like the, the wrestling students I'm talking to when they're cutting promos and stuff like that. It's like, it's okay to be dramatic. It is okay, okay. to be whatever you got. You guys are doing, this is your performance. Yes. This is your art. And I love that. And I'm glad you said that though. I'm like, I'm going to clip that. And I'm going to like, yeah, show it to them and be like, see this is what I'm saying. Yeah, you just I mean, said it in a way more eloquent way than I could. I mean, I like I I come from theater too, and so you know I study like I've studied scripts and I've studied story and I've broken down characters and have you know figure out how to how to to best represent that in in a play, a musical, dancing, like movement. I've taken movement classes. Like there's so many things that that theater is so much and wrestling they're very much connected and they're very mm -hmm. both very performative just like film and theater film and, and tv as well has those stories that we're trying to tell yeah. um and so i love hearing your perspective on that because it, it is so true and every move that happens you're telling a story every mm -hmm. facial expression you know it is telling that story that you're you're trying to tell um and it's so important yeah, exactly. And yeah. and that doesn't mean that the technical aspects aren't important too, because exactly. something that makes professional wrestling really special is a lot of the fans care about those details mm -hmm. more so than, you know, maybe like acting where most fans don't necessarily know those details of that. Wrestling fans really care about proper technique and, you know, making sure that your wrist lock is tight 
because they do watch MMA or, you know, if they're in Japan, for example, like they do judo, like they all know that. So their performance has to match that because the fans have a really high level, have a really, you know, high ring IQ in that way. So that's really important too, to make it look real and, and yeah. you really can't fake a lot of that stuff. But then you'll wrestle somewhere where the fans don't care about that. You know, I had that that critique given to me recently where I wrestled somewhere. And, um, you know, a lot of the technical stuff was just kind of over people's heads. And they just wanted to be yelled at and hear loud slaps and stuff like that, which isn't always <laughs> my forte. You know, I'm very, you know, a different type of wrestler yeah. in that way. So, you know, all that stuff is really, really important. And I think that's what yeah. makes professional wrestling the like ultimate art form. Oh yeah, absolutely. I love, I love all of it. And I think that's one of the reasons why I think some of the fans gravitate towards Mission Pro is that you'll never see, um, you'll never see a similar match in a show. Every match is different. Every match is so unique and every person in at Mission Pro is totally different from the other. You're not going to find uh, similar gimmicks or similar styles. Everybody's just so, everybody's so different, which I absolutely love. Yeah. And, um, Oh yeah, John is saying, even though you wear a mask, you have so much expression in your face with your eyes in the ring. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's all I can really show. And that was something I learned when I first started wrestling. I had my eyes covered. My entire body was covered except for my hands. Oh, wow. um, so I had to learn to tell stories with no facial expressions or very minimal because you can kind of see like my face under my mask a little bit when it would shift and stuff like that. But I would have to learn to tell stories that way. Um, and that really, I really didn't like it when I started, but, yeah. you know, looking back on it now, it's, it's a huge advantage because I can express with my whole body. And, um, you know, something I, I try to help, uh, tell young wrestlers to look at is watch the Mandalorian, which is that, mm -hmm. that Star Wars thing on Disney plus, um, he's wearing an entire, uh, some kind of steel. I know it's mentioned in there, but like, right. He, he can't emote at all because his, he's wearing a steel helmet and just steel everything or whatever it is. Sorry, I'm getting this wrong, but metal. Um, but he's able to emote with more than just his voice. You know, mm -hmm. he can move his whole body and convey what he's feeling or what he's going through in that time. Um, and I think it's really important for wrestlers to watch a show like that because that's, you know, that's storytelling. Absolutely. Do you feel that in like training nowadays that they they forget about that? Do you think they forget about that part of their training, like promos or or acting or working for TV or the performance of it in that way? Um, I can't really speak to that because yeah. it's not like there's a curriculum. There's not like, you know, this standardized curriculum that's throughout all wrestling schools. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why I think it's really important for young wrestlers to train at a bunch of different places. Yeah. Um, I started at the Wrestle Factory and we, you know, did certain things. We did things a certain way. We had over the top characters. Mm -hmm. We were lucha based, um, did lots of like world of sports style and, and Yave style and stuff like that. Um, but then I moved on to train with world famous CB at the worldwide dojo. And that's a different style. You know, yeah. he was trained by Delirious at, at uh, the Ring of Honor School. So that's that's a, a different philosophy of wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just gave me something totally different. And I really credit that for, um, you know, how much I've been able to up my game in the last couple of years is because I had this whole other piece um, that was given to me. And, and there's no right or wrong to either of these styles, but you right. just need to, to gather as much as you can. And you know, go overseas and go across the country and train in different places. Cause you know, like I said, there's not a standardized thing. There's no like one style out there. There's so much to learn and, and you kind of need all of it to, to become really successful in this business. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So I mean, has there been something like totally that we wouldn't expect that you were like, I'm going to take a class at, uh, in this and, and just try to utilize some of that um, in your in-ring work? There isn't, but I really want to get into like, you know, some kind of MMA or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I really feel like that's something I'm really interested in because I, I kind of took to technical wrestling more than I thought I, more than I expected to. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that would really help me out because, you know, right now my, all my offense is, you know, based 
in you know American pro wrestling or mm -hmm. or stuff I learned at Jakar or things like that. So I think that would really help me up my game. Um, but yeah, I have no like theater background. I have no real sports background at all. It's all it's all visual art. Um, and trying to figure out how to do all this stuff has been a, has been a wild ride. But yeah, I, I definitely want to expand my horizons into like other combat sports and stuff like that. That's awesome. I love it. And then um, let's talk about your mask. Did you design your mask? Because since you have the visual arts background, were you the designer of it? Or does, do you collaborate with someone? Because to, to, your mask, I feel, is like just so unique to you. The design of it, the way it fits and everything. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I work really closely with Closet Champion. They've designed all of my masks. Um, and it's just kind of been a continued evolution off of my first one. So mm -hmm. I was just given that set. Like, I had no say in what that first set of gear was. And like I said, it was all white and it had, like, um, the mesh visor. So it was always the visor. Yeah. And once I started, like, kind of having ideas for my own gear, I wanted to do... I didn't like the visor. It was difficult to wrestle in. So I wanted like my own eyes and they're like, nope, luchadors, you can't change your eyes. Like you're stuck with that. You just, we just, that's, that violates, you know, an unwritten rule in, in Lucha Libre and being a mass wrestler. So now we can't do that. So I'm stuck with the, the visor. Um, and yeah, it's just been a lot of like technical requirements or what I'll ask for. So I'll be like, you know, I want my eyes out at least. Yeah. Um, and you know at first it was a square it was a very square but what would happen is it would kind of like come over my nose and do this so um i looked at like lady shawnee's mask who is who is similar and took inspiration from that um mm -hmm. by having it like curve up around my nose and come down here so that's why it does look similar um you know i looked yeah right there i get that a lot <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, this, is, this is me i don't want to um, you know, there's only so many things you can do with a, a lucha mask. So that's kind of why the, it's this basic shape. And then, you know, I wanted my hair out. So, you know, a couple mm -hmm. years ago we, or no, I guess last year I started having my hair out. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we did that and, you know, it's, so what I'll do is when I'm working with them is I'll make like kind of a Pinterest board and tell, give them a brief story on what I'm thinking. So, okay. um, Originally, what I was thinking is like the gold around is going to represent like a frame because I, you know, was, mm -hmm. am a work of art. So the gold ornateness represents the frame and that will be on my mask and around my eyes and like kind of on my wrists and ankles and stuff like that. And then the gear itself would be the painting. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of textures and a lot of colors and stuff around my actual like top and bottom, but everything else is gold to be the frame. So that's, that's the basic template. And, um, yeah, for like this recent set is like white marble and rose gold. So that was just what I wanted. I just wanted to pair these two things. You know, I always think of like a texture. So it's going to be like white marble for this one, for example, and a, and a kind of a key color. And I wanted rose gold because I don't see that too much in wrestling outfits. And I was just kind of interested in it. So um, those are the two things I, I looked at and I put together a little Pinterest board, sent it over to Kate at um, Class of Champion. And, you know, she put put the whole thing together and it's just been this continued evolution which is so fun to collaborate with yeah. someone else and to to trust her you know i think that's the thing she really appreciates mm -hmm. is that you know i just send a couple ideas over and then i didn't see any sketches of this she i just came over and it was done and i was like yeah perfect love it wow okay wow no sketches that i thought maybe like sketches back and forth but wow that is a trust mm -hmm. just yeah. uh she yeah. just mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, a, that's quite a trust fall <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but i i do i love your mask i love the design of it and i love that all the details that go into it and of course your gear as well you know we've said it before that people's gear is like an expression of them and it's mm -hmm. not just gear sometimes it's really is a lot of thought and a lot of um consideration into how it looks and how it fits and what goes into it and even down to the fabric sometimes of what mm -hmm. the patterns are um because i know that just from thunder's gear you know we've talked about hers in the past on one of her gears that i think she just sold a couple months ago she has a snake on it and it was a throwback to her days at lucha underground mm -hmm. that it, but it was like it was like a similar pattern and she wanted to reference it so it was like pan everything you know everything has like a little touch everything has like a little meaning and it just it, i love to hear all the little meanings behind it because it's amazing you're like oh 
cool. Yeah, I get it now. <laughs> well, that that helps so much get you into the character and gets you into wanting to be a wrestler and it or just feeling like a wrestler, feeling like a fighter, feeling like a performer. Yeah. Is your gear has to match that. It has to feel special to you. It has to feel unique to you. It has to take you back to a special time in your life or um just something that inspires you or something mm -hmm. like that. Like you have to feel confident. You have to feel tough. You have to feel all of these things as a performer and as a wrestler. And and for me like I don't become Edith Real until I put the mask on. It's it's virtually impossible for me to, you know, to be this persona until I put the mask on. Um because I'm so used to it at this point. Like I've never I've never wrestled without it. You know, even in wow. training, like I'll I'll need to put the mask on if I'm doing like a practice match or something like that. Um, just to really become Edith and to 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 feel in every aspect of my my personality and and the way I move and the way I think and the way I talk it's all um it all starts as soon as I clip the mask on that's amazing was there ever a time um when you started getting your own gear you're like you know what I'm not gonna wear the mask yes <laughs> I, <laughs> I always thought that like I would have like a Chikara character and then something I would do outside of Chikara because Chikara is kind of its own universe, its own right. bubble in a way. Um, so I always thought I would I would have a separate thing, but you know, at the time, still life and now Edith, it just became. I, I don't know how else to wrestle without it. You know, it's just yeah. I put so much into it, and it's just it's defined how I wrestle and how who I am as a performer. I can't imagine doing anything different, and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's been times where I've put it as like a Lucha de Apuestas, like put it on the line, like recently against Ziggy Heim, um, yeah. or first mass. So, um, you know, when the time comes, I can put, you know, I'm happy to, to wager it because it is so important. It's more important than any championship than um, anything else I could put on the line in a wrestling match. Wow. Wow. I, I mean, think a lot of people would be really interested to be like, if, if Edith ever lost her match. It's, yeah. I, it's so ingrained in mm -hmm. it's, it's part of who you are and an extension of yourself. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. A thousand percent. It's my face. <laughs> yeah. It really is. Um, you know, talking about the landscape of wrestling and stuff, uh, you know, I think we've seen since the pandemic, this new emergence of not just women's wrestling, but the LGBTQ community in wrestling as well. And being that you're a part of both, it's like, how, ha how, how have you seen it from your perspective grow over the past couple of years or change? I mean, I'm very fortunate that I came in, you know, once this foundation has been set, you know, a lot of stuff, like I remember hearing stories about like Matter of Pride, where there was, you know, 12 people in the audience. And it was, um, you know, just hearing stories from like, Billy and Mariah and mm -hmm. Ashton and all the people who were there, what it was like at the very beginning. And um, yeah, I think I'm just, you know, really lucky that they had built that foundation and we were able to kind of take that and run with it and build it and connect with people. And um, it's so special to see that and to, to be a part of both communities. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's just really cool. And like that, those are my people and I love doing pride shows and I love doing women's shows and I love being able to bring bits of those to, uh, you know, shows that, are very diverse and bring everyone together. So, um, you know, those are definitely the most special shows for me. Yeah, I mean, the, like Melanie said, there is like this landscape has shifted um, in the, the past few years. And so how can, like, how can we be better about being inclusive and I'm using the, the larger we? Um, mm -hmm. And how, you know, like, cause there are promotions that are still trying to work on that and like, you know, we need to have diverse locker rooms like Mission Pro and, you know, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And so from your perspective, like what are some of these steps that we can, we can take to include everyone in mm -hmm. the wrestling community? I mean, I think that really starts with who's in leadership in these places and independent wrestling is interesting because it's usually just one person or, one, mm -hmm. or a couple people, but the more voices that are in the locker room and making decisions, the better it's going to be. And that really speaks to like the larger wrestling companies who, um, 
you know, like the AEWs and WWEs and, and stuff like that of the world. It's like you need diversity all throughout your corporate structure and your your creative structure and your leadership um, to really have an impact and to really understand um, other people's voices and why, you know, certain storylines aren't aren't very good or yes. um, <laughs> this isn't the best way to handle a certain situation is you need people who have authority to make those decisions. So that's, to me, that's the most important thing. And, you know, something that, you know, I would want my legacy to be a part of is to be able to bring, you know, representation to these larger companies in that capacity or in just general, you know, independent wrestling to, to all these other kind of mid-level super indie, whatever you want to describe it, um, to kind of have that influence. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, uh, when Effie first did his his show, The Big Ape Brunch, and then he's done it multiple times, and I feel like every year it just keeps getting bigger. Yeah. Um, did Is that something that when it first started, I don't, because I know you're part of it, you, you're like, were you nervous at first, or did you say, no, I know this is going to be big, and it's going to keep getting bigger? Um. No, I definitely wasn't nervous, because, you know, a lot of times I'm on shows and I'm kind of the only one like me, you know, there's only mm -hmm. a few women's wrestlers or there's, you know, I'm the only queer wrestler on the show. So, you know, most people in wrestling are super supportive and i never really feel like an outcast, but like mm -hmm. to be on these like kind of pride shows, it's like, okay, the, this is my community. And there's something really special anytime I'm on that. Um, my first one was dark chic brought me out to hood slam um two years ago three years ago i don't know a while ago <laughs> and you know we all met up at her apartment and we're all just hanging out and we we're all just talking and we kind of realized like as if we're best friends and we've known each other for years and years and years and we realized that no one has met each other prior to that day this is the first time every single person has met everyone else wow. and we just immediately got along like the oldest of friends and that's something that's really special when you're you know someone from a specific community in this mm -hmm. larger world of professional wrestling so that's that's been kind of the attitude from big gay brunch to butch versus gore to cassandra cup and stuff like that is just like we all you know we're all so close and so connected in that way um that it's just like we've always known each other. And then that ties into these performances, you know, right. that shows itself on stage in the ring of how, you know, some of my best matches are from these places where diversity is not just something that they talk about, not just a marketing thing. It's like, it's something that's, that is ingrained, that is very true right. and very real and very authentic. And, you know, that's where my best matches are. Like my match with Sheik at um, the first gay brunch was one of my best mm -hmm. matches ever. I love my match recently with Max the Impaler. Mm -hmm. um, every time I work at like Enjoy Wrestling or Fest Wrestling, which are very, very diverse places, but that's not like, it's not just a slogan. It's just who they are and just right. who they, what they're thinking of. So, um, you know, I know Mission Pro is the same way. So that's one of the reasons I'm really looking forward to my match this weekend is I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a banger, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, always. always. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. To use, to use whole dips terms, bangers all day, yeah. bangers mm -hmm. only. <laughs> That's all I do. That's all I want. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. I feel like you and La Rosa are just going to go out there and you're going to tear it down. Uh, a lot of the fans are really like so excited for this match because mm -hmm. They they've seen uh, La Rosa, they've seen you, but you they've never seen you together, together, which is crazy. And there's just so much excitement and buzz around this match because first time matchup, and mm -hmm. with somebody who is a staple at Mission Pro like mm -hmm. La, La Rosa, and she's already got this like uh like this build up around her, and they want to see how your energy is gonna match hers and how it's gonna. It, there's just so much excitement. I don't know if you felt it yet, <laughs> mm -hmm. but we've definitely felt it on we our end. We have. I mean, everyone's <laughs> talking. When that match dropped, it blew up, and everyone was yeah. talking about it, and they keep talking about it. So I'm so stoked for this one. Me too. Me too. Quite a way to debut too. Like this yeah. is. I wasn't expecting this high of a <laughs> of a match in my first time down there, but I'm I'm very you know I'm very flattered and very honored and very you know. It's, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. 
Yeah, it's going to be great. I think that, you know, I, one of the things that people love and I love about Mission Pro is the fact that we can still put first time matchups together because I mean, La Rosa, she is a vet in this industry. You have had your fair share of matches as well. And the fact that you guys have never met or been in the same locker room is crazy to me. I know. Um, so I, I'm loving the fact that we're going to have a lot of first time matchups on this show. And I'm so excited to see how they go down. But I think that this is the match that has a lot of people buzzing. One, because I think you were the most like, like when we asked for people to like send in who they'd like to see, I think you were one of the ones that was most requested. Really? And I kept, and I was like, I, I had to keep it to myself. I was like, like I almost, know, almost. I know, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I can't say anything because I want to keep it a secret. But I'm like, I know, stop <laughs> tagging me. <laughs> I know. Melanie gets all the messages of like, hey, you need to have this person. And I'm like, okay, yeah. take it. And then I time. see it when it's like on Twitter. In time, like, in time. I know. And then, and then when I think it was on Twitter, we asked like, hey, does anybody or tag who you'd want to see? And I yeah. was like, we get it. I know. I'm working on it. <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, so we have your incredible match happening this weekend. I know there's, we have an incredible card planned. Are there any other matches that you saw that you just can't wait? I mean, uh, we have uh, Willow and Shaza coming back. Um, mm -hmm. Anyone else that, uh, any other matches that you're like, oh man, I'm going to have to watch that one. I mean, I, mean, I was definitely going to say Willow and Shaza. Like, they're, you know, two people I know very, very well. I wrestled Shaza for the first time very recently. Um, they're two of my favorite people to wrestle, and, mm -hmm. and um, they're the two people I know the best on this show. So I am absolutely going to be at the curtain watching that match. I think you're going to have a lot of people at the curtain watching you as yeah. well, because I think some people have their eyes set on you. Do you ever feel like, man, you're, you know, you're moving up the ranks uh, and you're one of the top people right now in the industry. Do you feel like you have a target on your back? Cause I feel like a, like a lot of people are going to be, especially, you know, a lot of the women in the back are going to be having their eyes on you because of the fact that, okay, she's at mission pro she's fair game now. <laughs> That's hard for me to get used to because I always felt like the underdog. Like I'm only, I know you're talking about all over the place or, you know, you know, have been around. This is only my fourth year. So I'm still, I'm still very young here. So, you know, to talk about, you know, a target on my back, that's a, uh, that's uncharted, uh, that's unfamiliar territory for me. So I, I don't mean, know. I don't know. You're, I mean, yeah. You've been ranked on, on the PWI list in 2021. I mean, people are talking about you. And so mm. this, you know, and you're here at Mission Pro. So, I mean, 2022 is, is your year, it seems. I hope yeah. so. I hope so. I've already started collecting a few belts. So, uh, you know, things, Things have been going my way this year. I'm very fortunate and very, very happy that my hard work is paying off. And if that means there's a target on my back, like, okay, bring it. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, I'll know, take we, it. I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, we still have, I mean, I don't want to call them rookies. They've been in the, in, the, in the game a little bit. But, you know, we still have some, you know, young wrestlers in our locker room. And they're looking at what's going on in the indies. And I think that they're definitely checking out to see what you have because, you know, um, once uh, we announced, because we didn't tell anybody that who we had booked for this show until the, the matches dropped, um, I did get a couple like, oh, really, Melanie? <laughs> so I, I do think that people are definitely going to be looking out for you. Like I said, we have a couple youngins in the locker room that, you know, yeah. people got to make a name for themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. I feel like you're foreshadowing on something. Watch I mean, like, my just, back when I'm out there. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, we have a lot of young ones that have some attitude. Melanie knows. That is, oh, that I don't like attitude. No, no, no. I don't deal, I don't deal well with attitude. Exactly. <laughs> so, so I think maybe there might be some uh, putting some people in their place, maybe. Oh, yeah. no, no, no. Mm-mm. <laughs> Edith knows her place and she's taken it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I do love it though. But I do want to ask uh, one last thing before we let you go. At Mission Pro, is there, uh, is there an opponent that you want to take on? Is there a dream opponent or a dream match for you yeah. at Mission Pro? Ooh, ooh. Um, I'll take all comers. I'm really, I mean, anytime I'm at, I go anywhere, I'm after that championship. So... That's that's where my eye is on, and that's that's where I'm headed. So um, 
Lots of more gold. Yeah, yeah, of course. I think Holiday's got a big target Holiday on her back. has the biggest target, right? Oh, Valerie she knows the biggest that. target on her back. <laughs> Um, well, this, uh, thank you so much for joining joining us tonight on On a Mission. So incredible to talk to you. We can't wait to see you this weekend. We can't wait to see your match against La Rosa Negra. It's going to be incredible. And I know the fans can't wait. Um, where can people follow you on social media and buy merchandise? Ooh, I love that. Um, I am at Eda Surreal on Instagram, on Twitter, and Pinterest. Every time I'm on a podcast, I'm really trying to push Pinterest. Follow me on Pinterest. I'm pinning great recipes right now. I'm working on a I'm working on a T-shirt for uh, for my friend Joey Janella. So um, you can see like what I'm what I'm pinning on there. So trying to make wrestling Pinterest happen because you know Twitter is just a cesspool. So like meet me on meet me on Pinterest. That's where I want the conversation to go. Sold. <laughs> So, I love I'm it. a Pinterest. I'm you gonna say it right now. I am a Pinterest for I. I am so there. I have oh, so yeah. many boards for like home improvement and like <laughs> accent walls and like random stuff. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and puppies and animals, but oh yeah, that's it. That's it. Outfits, <laughs> all that stuff. And then oh, most importantly, merch. You can merch. find all my stuff at edithsurreal.com. That's easy. It's easy. Yeah. By the way, your your website was super easy to find. It was all there. I loved it. So yeah, it was great. Yeah, <laughs> she's also a graphic designer. <laughs> yes, um, right here, the queen of organization. I yeah. mean, <laughs> there needs to be like its own separate wrestling seminar on organization. By queen of organization. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, we I, talked I about it. it. We talked about doing the Twitch. We need to do a uh, Twitch organization. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do a little seminar with you this weekend. We're gonna do a quick little thing. We're gonna learn. We're gonna we're gonna organize drawers. We're gonna yeah. everything. Yep, everything. I'll organize the ring truck. I'll organize your yeah, merch booth. Good. Whatever Actually, you need. You're gonna to come to my house instead, and yeah. not the show. <laughs> Since Emily just moved, it's incomplete. It's oh. in disarray, but it's mm -hmm. all good. Yeah, we'll stop at the container store on the way, and I there and I see it down there. We'll go there too. They're great. That story is a blessing, let's just say. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you so much. We could talk about this all night. Um, <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us. We can't wait to see you this weekend. Um, and have a great night. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'll see you thank soon. You. See you soon. Good night. Hi. Oh my goodness. Are you ready for this weekend, Melanie? We have so much going I'm on. We have so all the matches. You guys, if you have not seen the incredible card, go on Mission Pro Wrestling socials. Follow, like, uh, subscribe to us on all of our social media platforms. Subscribe here on YouTube. More content coming soon, especially after the show this weekend. You know, we uh, remember, uh, tweet and use our official hashtag this weekend when you're watching the show. Tag Mission Pro Wrestling because we're going to be you know, we want to follow all the action and all of the the responses and reaction to the shows. So um, also sponsorships are open for the rest of the year. So mm -hmm. email missionprowrestling at gmail.com and uh, sign up to be a sponsor. And we can share all the different tiers and programs. You can have a, uh, you can sponsor a match, you can sponsor yep. a wrestler, a show itself. And it's a great way to get involved in Mission Pro and support uh, what we're doing here. Absolutely. And don't forget, guys, all of our new merch is up on the website, missionprowrestling.net. So while you're there buying tickets for the shows, uh, go get your merch. Uh, all the all of our um, exclusive T-shirts, once they're gone, they're gone. We will not be restocking. There'll be a new uh, design, but you'll get the exclusive Mission Pro Wrestling, excuse me, Mission Pro uh, Wrestling Over Everything T-shirt and hoodies are on the website. The pins, the buttons, the the stickers and everything, it's all out there. Go check it out, pick up your merch. Um, we had some extra posters from the show, so they're up on the website now too. They are autographed, except for I think the banger's only one. So guys, you are not gonna be disappointed. Go pick up your merch, go get your tickets. This weekend is gonna be so much fun. Um, and I appreciate everybody who supports uh, Mission Pro and comes and joins us every Tuesday right here on the Mission Pro YouTube channel. Thank you all so much. Um, Melanie, have a great night. Thank you everyone for joining us in the chat. Tomorrow, we're gonna have another special on a mission episode, 8 p.m. Central, 
and Delilah Doom will be joining us. And I'm sure Holodad will be super excited about that. <laughs> I'll get my jazzercise Everyone, get on. Get your jazzercise and all your exercise on. Wear your cute little exercise outfit because maybe we'll have a little exercise demo. Maybe something might happen. I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, but we'll, we'll definitely have a lot of fun. So thank you all so much again for joining us. And we'll see you tomorrow for On a Mission. And then definitely this weekend for Don't Stop Me Now. Absolutely. See you all later. Thanks Buenas for noches. Everyone.